They led life's earthly parade for more than 160 million years. They conquered the land, and now they capture our imagination. Before they became extinct, they matched function with form to perfection in this magnificent beast. They were dinosaurs. This is Tyrannosaurus rex, king of the beasts. Big Sky Country, New Mexico, 1993. Peace might be at hand in the Middle East, but the big news here was the discovery of the world's first known Tyrannosaurus footprint. 65 million years ago, a large Tyrannosaur stepped in mud. The footprint filled with sand, which hardened to form a sandstone plaster cast. 65 million years later, the University of Colorado's Martin Lockley found it, poised to strike, and as fresh as yesterday, sculpted on this rock. <laughs> That's really something. It's a big animal. Well, that would make sense because Tyrannosaurus Dr. Lockley. is so darn big. This is a Tyrannosaurus rex footprint. A Tyrannosaurus footprint. We're, we're sure about that now for a, a number of reasons. Um, one is it's definitely made by a carnivorous dinosaur. It has a digit one, a hallux, and it has claw impressions. That's typical um, of a theropod or a carnivore. 85 centimeters long. Each claw-tipped foot covered an area almost the size of an open umbrella. But then it had to support and propel up to six metric tons of muscle and bone. The dinosaur's final flowering produced Tyrannosaurus. In geological terms, T-Rex found life just before the dinosaurs' mass extinction. From tail tip to snout, a six-ton adult extended 12 meters over two car lengths. Seldom has nature crafted such a perfect killing machine. Perfection took time. Early dinosaurs, Aoraptor, and Coelophysis appeared 225 million years ago. The huge primordial continent was starting to break up. From Triassic times to the Jurassic period, to Stegosaurus, Diplodocus, and other plant eaters, including a giant from China, Memachisaurus. By Cretaceous times, continents had taken on familiar shapes. Dinosaurs, including Parasaurolophus and Triceratops, were trying on different shapes too. By 70 million years ago, what looks like our modern world map is populated by species in the Tyrannosaur group, Albertosaurus, Nanotyrannus, and Tarbosaurus among them. What sort of world might it have been? Tyrannosaurs chase. Corythosaurs flee. How does it end? We'll find out. But first, what made this killer tick? In all, some 50 fang-like teeth projected from a powerfully muscled jaw. This leg bone from a plant-eating hadrosaur was snapped by a tyrannosaur. Embedded deep in the hadrosaur bone, a broken tyrannosaur tooth.
Other victims included the massive rhinoceros-like Triceratops. There are many, many little puncture wounds that we believe are bite marks from a Tyrannosaurus rex. You can see there are almost... For Peter Larson, this Triceratops bone is a powerful indication of a Tyrannosaurus strength. And if we take two teeth from a Tyrannosaurus, you can see that they nicely fit into these holes. What about the teeth? The teeth of Tyrannosaurus rex are very formidable weapons. Uh, in fact, this bone, as you've seen, has many, many bite marks on it. But this one particular hole on this end tells us quite a story. If we take this tooth and insert it, it actually goes clear through the hole in the femur. We believe that this femur, when it was attached to the, uh, to the triceratops, which is attached right here, we believe that it was grabbed onto by the Tyrannosaurus rex and this bone was just ripped off of the body of the Triceratops. The Badlands of Alberta, so-called because aeons of erosion left the land gullied and broken. The Badlands is dinosaur country, rich in fossil remains. Which is why the Royal Tyrol Museum of Paleontology is located here. I think the worst part is going to be trying to get the hip section back together. It looks pretty crumbly. Dr. Philip Curry, head of dinosaur research, is a specialist on carnivores. Where's the rest of it right now? In that block? Or? The Royal Tyrol oh, Museum yeah. boasts the world's largest exhibit with 40 dinosaur species restored, many like from the Badlands. Not content with rebuilding their bones, Dr. Curry applies scientific analysis to the question, how did they live? Tyrannosaur teeth, like all carnivore teeth, um, are very long and tapering. And we think that this is a very simple structure when you look at it at first. But in fact, uh, as you start looking closer, you'll see that there are in fact serrations running down the back of the tooth and the front of the tooth. And each one of those serrations is like a little tooth of its own. So that when a tyrannosaur is biting into another animal and its tooth goes across like that, across the flesh, what each one of those serrations is doing is hooking the meat. And as the meat gets hooked, it gets pulled between the serrations and cut. And so that um, when a tyrannosaur bites into another animal, its teeth bite very efficiently into the into the flesh and they cut the meat and they cut the bone too so that's one characteristic that's that's quite different than what we would think serrations front and back made each edge a sawtooth imagine a mouthful of 50 serrated steak knives ripping flesh the result even on big triceratops bones was devastating one disadvantage Serrations create weak spots, leaving material liable to snap. Curiously, these serrations do not stem from a simple slit. Instead, their bases form rounded pinholes. At Keio University's Science and Engineering Department, an experiment by Professor Nobutoshi Yamasaki explains the role of these pinholes. Serrations in the simulated tooth on the right consist of simple slits. On the left, pinhole slits, as in real teeth. A hydraulic ram tugs both teeth with equal force. Suddenly, the one with a straight slit broke, says Yamasaki, because forces focus on the inner end, making it weak. Pinhole slits, like those in real teeth, spread the force. Engineers understand the pinhole principle very well, as it affects teeth in steel and ceramic blades. The mystery is, how did T-Rex devise the pinhole principle 70 million years ago without the benefit of human engineering?
For scientists like Phil Curry, their hunt for the dragon is an ongoing quest to reveal nature's perfections. Hill City, South Dakota. Old time prospectors might have said, there's bones in them thar hills. The bones come here, to the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research. and to the knowledgeable eye of its director, Peter Larson. This is a rib from the Tyrannosaurus rex known as Stan. If we look closely at this rib, we'll see on the very edge of it a mark. This mark is a healed injury caused by the bite of a Tyrannosaurus rex. This shows us that Tyrannosaurus rex fought among themselves. I believe that Tyrannosaurus was a territorial animal and when families who lived in certain territories would, fight, would meet, they would fight for this territory in order to have a place to hunt. Engineered teeth fit in a well engineered skull. Curiously, the skull was not massive. Rather, massive muscles hung on a lattice of bone. This might have led to severe fractures, except that flexible joints linked the bones. Woodpeckers offer a parallel. One might expect skull damage in a bird which spends life hammering wood with its head. Not so. Joints in its skull act as shock absorbers. Impact stresses never reach the brain. Similar skull joints protected T. rex. Dr. Curry. Tyrannosaurus, of course, has a very massive skull. But uh, there's a lot of big open areas inside this. And we find that uh, between the bones, the bones are actually very loosely attached to each other, so there's movement possible between them. And this is especially obvious at the back of the jaw, where the back of the jaw can actually open up. And when you look at the lower jaw, you can actually see that there's a joint running down the middle of the lower jaw. Now, what these joints are for is to act as shock absorbers. So when Tyrannosaurus is closing his mouth on something, um, he has less chance that he's going to break his teeth, number one. Um, it allows him to put a lot more fat power and force on the things that he's eating. And then finally, if the prey is still alive and struggling in his mouth, there's some give inside the jaws so that, again, things don't get broken in the Tyrannosaurus head. Imagine this. A six-ton Tyrannosaur locks onto an animal with the bulk of, say, a modern rhinoceros. Both bodies twist and turn. But Tyrannosaurus' teeth are deep in the flesh of its prey. So its head has to absorb the combined shocks from both animals. Hence, its skull joints, massive muscles in place of heavy bone, and the strong, flexible lattice of bone itself. As well as strength, a killer needs finely honed senses to track prey. I wanted to do that. The Foothills Hospital, Calgary. Dr. Curry's Albertosaurus skull is here to get a CAT scan. Albertosaurus is a member of the Tyrannosaur group. Okay, to about here, or should I go up? 